This is the video solution to one of the example problems showing you how to linearize data from Logger Pro. Here's the problem that I have. It's on the, the website. The displacement is the independent variable in this example A, and I've got a column of data for displacement, and I've got a column of data for the force, and the units are underneath the titles of each of the um, columns. And it's already identified the displacement as being the independent variable. That means it's going to be the x values, the horizontal values, and force would be the dependent variable that'll be on the vertical axis or the y axis. All right, so now let me switch to Logger Pro. So I've started up Logger Pro and created a new document, and I've already begun putting data in it. Let me show you how I'll finish putting the data. It's really easy. When you see these squares, you just type the numbers in, right in the squares. So I'm down to 8. Now let's do entry number 9. I'll press the return key, and it goes to 240. Press the return key, and it goes down and over. And then I'll press the data as 10. Press the return key, and 297. And I'm all set. Now I've got all the data in here. I've got X and Y data from the data table that was on the uh, website. And there are a couple things I want to do. First off, and if it's hard seeing the data, I can do a couple things with this. I can actually make all the points get connected so it looks a little bit more like a curve or whatever I'm after. I'm just going to go to the options menu and go down to where it says graph options. Or an easier thing to do, since it wasn't highlighted, is I'll just double click on the graph itself. Not anything specific on the graph, just right in the middle of the graph. And on my screen, I'll choose Graph Options, and I'll go to Connect the Points, and then click OK. That connects the points. Now when I go to Options, the Graph Options lights up. That's because the graph area is selected. But just double-click in the middle of the graph, and you'll be fine. All right, I want to change my data set over here from X to Y to Force and Displacement. Displacement was the X values, the horizontal values. To change it, I'm going to go over here in the columns, double-click on the letter X, type the word Displacement. And the short name is just going to be D. The units are going to be meters. That's done. Let's do the same thing for the Y and change that to force. So now I'm going to type in force. Short name is F. And the units are going to be newtons. Now to move around the screen, I'm just pressing the tab key instead of return. And it jumps from place to place automatically for me, which is nice, handy. And then I'll click on done. So now my graph looks good. I've got force and I've got displacement but it's a curve. And then I want to find a relationship between these two, so I need to linearize the data. This kind of curve is an x squared curve. In other words, the x variable needs to be squared. So I need to create a column of x squared values. Easy enough. I'll go to data, new calculated column, so all the way down where it says new calculated column, and now I've got to start coming up with my name. Well, I've identified this as a x squared curve, so I'm going to call this displacement and I want to make a square term appear up here. I want to choose on the right where the star is, click on that little triangle, go all the way down to where it says superscript. Notice there are all kinds of variables I can play with. I'm going to go to superscript and go down to 2. If I was square rooting, I would raise this to the half power. And now, short name, I'll call it d squared. d squared. Units, meters squared meters squared and click. So whatever I do to the axis, I gotta do to everything else. The short name, the name, the units, everything, make it all match. So in this case I squared it. Now I've gotta tell it how to calculate the function, or the column, sorry. I was thinking ahead. Choose a variable. The variable I want is gonna be the displacement column. So I renamed it, that's why I know it's the displacement column. I'll click on the variables column down here, go down to displacement, and select that. And then I'll square it, so just like on a graphing calculator, I'll use caret and the number two. So I'll do that to square it done. It just created a new column over here in blue. I'll show you all the columns. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the graph. A little box shows up on the left hand side. I will drag it over. Then I'll click on the table. I'll click on the box on the right. Drag it over. Move this around a little bit. And I can see my original displacement column, my force column, and my new d squared column. So everything's nice and organized. But my graph didn't change. So to change the graph, I'll click down here in the bottom column because I know it's supposed to be an x squared. So I'm going to play with the x axis. Displacement, go down and choose Displacement Squared. That's the calculated column I just made. Now it looks like a straight line. That's great. Let's get the statistics on this and see how straight it is and how well it matches the data. I'm going to go up to the top. There's an icon up there where it says Linear Fit. Um, I'm going to click on that. And that's great. See the bracket on the left and the bracket on the right? That's all the data points. If I wanted to move it around, I could adjust a little bit just by dragging those brackets up and down along the graph. But in this case, I want to grab all the data, so I'll make sure it goes through them all. Take the box, and when I put it in my word processing document, 
it's going to be a really small. So I need to increase the size of the font in this box. I'm going to double click on the box, click on the word appearance, and I'm going to change the font from 10 to something big, like 24. There we go. Now it's nice and big. So when it goes to my word processor, it gets shrunk. That'll be easy to read. And at this point, I'm all set. Um, let's see, what are the other options to show you? One of them is the auto scale feature. I'll show you that one. I'll switch it back to the displacement. And you can see the blue curve, it's on, the red curve here, it's on the left. That's really wrong. If I click on this letter A at the top, it'll auto, auto scale it for me. Now I want to go back to what I really originally wanted to do. So I'll click on the word displacement, displacement squared. And this is the graph I'm after. Life is good. I'll move this over. So we're all set at this point. My equation is y equals mx plus b. The one kind of flaw in this program is it should replace the x with whatever my x-axis is. And my x-axis is d squared. So really, this should be f is equal to m d squared plus b. And the next step is just to throw in my numbers for m and for b. So my final equation would be f is equal to 3 d squared minus 3. And if I look a little bit more, I can see my root mean squared error. The RMSE is 0. That's great. It's a perfect match. So this data is great. My equation is a great model for what's going on between these two variables.